What is going on everybody? It is Tyler here and when you hear that rad music going on in the background, you know what time it is. That's right. Let's get jumping right in to the Keyblade Master Podcast. Guys, I know I'm a little bit late to the party here, but today on the podcast, we're going to just talk about a bunch of movies, upcoming movies, all this kind of stuff that happened that we got from San Diego Comic-Con. So you know what? Let's go ahead and get jumping right into it. First off, I want to go ahead and say that I was very, very impressed with the movie Ready Player One, the new Steven Spielberg movie. I'm one of those people who look at it, I don't even know what the movie's about. I just saw the trailer and saw all these like really cool video game movie references from like all, you know, a couple decades ago. And it's so awesome. Like it just feels so nostalgic. We got all kind of like references from like Iron Giant and like stuff like that. It's just insane. So guys, Ready Player One, I just wanted to go ahead and say was probably one of the most impressive trailers I've seen in a while. It's one of those trailers that really hit that nostalgic factor, and that is what's going to draw people to go see it. Also, it's Steven Spielberg, so go ahead and check it out, Ready Player One. And I just wanted to go ahead and throw that out there real quick, because we're going to be talking about a lot of superhero movies coming up, and you know, I just wanted to get that out there. So Ready Player One, the new Steven Spielberg movie, looking fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with DC and the DCEU. What did we get there? Well... I'll tell you, we got a Justice League trailer. This will be the second Justice League trailer and a four minute Justice League trailer, which I was like, cool, that's a long trailer. But you know what? It's fine. The movie is looking very, very good, guys. So far from what we've seen, all the trailers are showcasing all the members of the Justice League. You know, we, uh, you know, some people are saying that, you know, there's some kind of like, conspiracies going on the part in the trailer where bruce is talking to like this hologram or, or something as he talking to superman does that raise some questions there also a little fun story henry cavill the actor who plays superman i don't know if you guys have heard about this but basically he's actually working on the next mission impossible mission impossible 6 well dc warner brothers and all that they really they said they needed henry cavill back to do reshoots for superman well, the thing is, this was kind of like a high school drama moment, I guess you could say. It really is kind of a big issue when you think about it, but not really. So what happened was, Henry Cavill is on set right now and filming Mission Impossible 6. His character in the film has a mustache, which, you know, it's like, okay, it was whatever. He just got a mustache, you know? But, of course, Henry Cavill Superman does not have a mustache, so... Warner Brothers was basically saying like, yo, um, and I'm giving you guys like the quick little snippet version, you know, Warner Brothers told like the Mission Impossible crew, they're like, look, we, we need Henry Cavill back to do some research for Superman. Well, the people at Mission Impossible were like, no, because that would require him to shave his mustache. And we don't want that because apparently it's like super important to his character and they don't want him shaving it for whatever reason. I don't know. That's just a little drama going on in movies right about now. The story broke out a couple days ago, but I just wanted to throw that out there. But the new trailer for Justice League looking very good. I'm very, very excited about it. Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Let me just go ahead and say he is going to be fantastic as Aquaman. A lot of people are a little concerned about Ezra Miller's Flash, which I don't know if you guys know this. I'm not a humongous DC fan. I kind of tend to stick with Marvel a little bit more and side with them. You know, I'm a bigger Marvel fan than I am DC. I'm not really concerned about Ezra Miller's Flash. His name's kind of hard to say. It kind of throws me off when I go and say it. You know, it's looking good. The whole movie's looking good. Everyone's... The people and the heroes we have in this movie are looking really good. The story, I mean, it's a Justice League movie, so they're teaming up to fight this big old threat they're going to have to get it together for. It's going to be interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. And along with DC's, I guess, like whole time being at San Diego Comic-Con these past couple of days, we also got a look at a bunch of new upcoming movies. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of those that we'll be releasing in the near future, some coming out sooner than others. Among those, I think the biggest one that was announced was Aquaman solo movie coming out in 2018. We got to look at we got Shazam, which is coming out in 2019. Wonder Woman 2 come out, coming out in 2019 and a Cyborg standalone movie coming out in 2020, along with a Green Lantern Corps movie coming out in 2020. 
Films in development include Justice League Dark, Flashpoint, and Untitled Justice League sequel, The Batman, which had a bunch of drama along there, and at, the, at San Diego Comic-Con, Ben Affleck basically said, look, I'm going to be playing Batman, so don't you guys worry, it's going to happen. An Untitled Man of Steel sequel, which I want to go ahead and say, I'm very curious as to what this movie is going to be about and when it's going to come out, because let's be honest, Man of Steel as of now is not the strongest DC movie. It's just not. It wasn't It wasn't the best. It wasn't the most exciting. It was a Superman movie. We got it. It ties in with the DCEU. Yeah, it's having a sequel. Suicide Squad 2. Okay, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. Suicide Squad the movie was a decent movie. I'm not going to say that I loved the movie and it was the best thing that happened to DC. It really was not my favorite movie it was good and i enjoyed watching it and it's one of those movies that carried along that beginning dc trend where critics hated it fans adored it which is is the case as with batman vs superman the critics just railed it where most fans were saying you know it's actually a pretty good movie where but you know my theory about that is there dc started to get their their share of live action movies so they were really excited about it and even though the movies weren't the greatest they were still movies that personified these heroes from the dc comics and that's why i think the um the fans loved it so much but suicide squad 2 i can understand why it's getting a sequel because just the overall popularity of it people love it of course we're going to get harley quinn back again jared leto's joker which you know those who were probably the most popular characters in the movie and to some people that i know some of the best part about the movie so suicide squad 2 not a release year or release window or anything or an exact date when they're coming out but it is in development currently we're also getting an untitled black adam film along with an untitled nightwing film and then batgirl which is going to be very interesting now before we move away from dc here let's talk about flashpoint the only thing i know about flashpoint is that everyone's super stoked about it and that it's like an alternate timeline where Bruce Wayne's father, Thomas Wayne, is Batman. So it sounds like a really cool concept and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And because it's the first Flash movie, it's going to be weird because he's going to be introduced, well, he's going to have like a main role in the upcoming Justice League film. So he's going to kind of have like a Spider-Man role, you know, where he's going to be like implemented in this movie and then get a movie later on down the road. So I want to see how that works out. And I'm curious, but it does sound very interesting. So that was all that DC offered us. And and honestly, it, it's a lot, you know, I mean, the fact that they basically re- reveal their entire lineup of movies with most a little less than half of them getting release windows for that's really really cool and that was big for dc and in my opinion they did super good at san diego comic-con with announcing all that but it was it dc's uh, a panel at comic-con i was very impressed and i'm actually looking forward to most of these movies coming out from dc part of the dc eu now let's move on to marvel as you guys know like i said i'm a little bit late to the party here because i haven't done a podcast in a while but at the D23 Expo, Kingdom Hearts 3 2018, baby! Um, no, we also got, um, well, not we, but the people who attended the event actually got to take a look at some footage from the upcoming Avengers Infinity War. Hasn't been leaked yet, but, you know, we got a bunch of information from that, and that was where, like, all these kind of, like, more solid ideas, these solid conspiracies or theories, I call them conspiracies, not kind of conspiracies, I call them, but basically they're theories about, you know, who's going to be in this movie, what's their role, all this kind of stuff, and people described it. I think one of the scenes that people described was Thanos, the main villain of the movie, hurling a planet, a planet at the Avengers. That is in a description that someone said about the footage shown at D23, and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like, the scale of that. I couldn't even imagine it in my head. Because we've literally never had anything like that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It gets me super excited. We've got upwards to, I think, 34 or 36 heroes being in Avengers Infinity War. Which is insane. Which is absolutely insane, guys. 
But the cast for Avengers Infinity War went up on the panel, answered a bunch of questions, and, you know, just getting fans hyped up for the movie, which is coming out next May. Avengers 3, next May. It's absolutely unbelievable. In addition to all that, and, you know, all the cast members coming out, we got to look at a new Thor trailer, and it took everything about the first trailer and doubled the cool elements and made it into a really cool trailer. So we got a more in-depth look at Hulk in this in this trailer. He got himself a new buzz cut, looks like, looking fleek. You know, the uh, Thor and Hulk have their little back and forth, you know, kind of acquaintances more than friends type relationship in the movie, and I like that. I really do like that. We got a shot of Valkyrie, Thor, Hulk, and Loki all on this Asgardian bridge leading up to where Hemdall guard. And it's, it's really looking cool. I mean, the, the theme that they're trying to implement in this trailer, making it like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's really going to draw more people in because the Thor movies weren't and still aren't the most popular Marvel movies out there. So I'm really looking forward to Thor Ragnarok coming out this November, actually. I'm hoping we get a lot from this movie. Um... Doctor Strange is supposed to make an appearance in this movie. Um, Anthony Hopkins is on the cast list. What, you know, what happens there? We don't know. It's really exciting stuff from Marvel that we got. We got a new poster of Thor Ragnarok and also Avengers Infinity War. It's basically like this really psychedelic, colorful looking, you know, poster. All, like all the posters are like this. They have like these really cool, colorful elements going on. We got Thanos just being all BA and stuff in these poses and it's just looking fantastic getting Marvel fans like myself hyped for Avengers Infinity War alongside all the stuff that Marvel provided we also got a look at Captain Marvel Brie Larson's Captain Marvel coming out in 2019 we got a look at her outfit her costume and it's looking fantastic it looks awesome I love that they didn't and I knew they wouldn't but they didn't run with the leather, or I'm not, I'm not leather, spandex suit from the comics. Captain Marvel in the comics, the suit would not go well in movies. So they, they added in like this combat style super suit, which is really looking nice. We also got to look at some details in the Captain Marvel movie. So we got the movie would take place in the 1990s and that Samuel L. Jackson will return and play Nick Fury in this movie with both eyes. So we'll get a look at how he lost his eye in the movies, which will be interesting. It'll answer some fans questions about how that happened, who didn't really read the comics. And it's going to be a good movie. I'm really looking forward to it. And to close things out today, guys, I wanted to save the best for last because I know it's, I, I should have said, I mean, Avengers is really up there, you know, but we don't have anything solid for, for it yet. When we get a trailer for it, I'll be super stoked and I'll put that as best for last. But we got another look at Marvel's The Defenders, the new Netflix team up show consisting of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage and Iron Fist coming out this August. I am so excited about this show, guys. Oh, my goodness. The new trailer that came out, we got a look at Elektra in her super swag fighting style. It was just fantastic. We got to look at Sigourney Weaver as her villain in this show. She looks like a very mysterious villain. And she even came out and said during one of the panels that she's not really playing a villain. It's more like a adversary for an idea. I guess it's kind of hard to describe, but Sigourney Weaver's character, Alexandra, is not really a villain. You know, it's kind of like she's there. She's making things hard for our heroes and all this kind of stuff, whatever. But we also, we got to look at all the heroes, like, you know, it c coming together, defending New York and all this kind of stuff. It looks really, really cool. The shot of Madame Gao and Alexandra looking at each other, just staring, oh, gave me absolute chills guys i'm really looking forward to this show the new trailer just blew me away i mean i know we just got one like a, actually the first one we got came out a few months ago so it's been a while since we've gotten a new trailer before that we also got this kind of like teaser i guess narrated by stan lee basically talking about you know there's heroes like the avengers out there but we also need street level heroes like jessica jones and all these other people and daredevil and in that trailer which wasn't as popular as the new one because it was kind of like, it wasn't like, okay, here's the straight trailer, go check it out from Marvel until like later on because it got leaked, I think, at first. But at the end of that, we got to look at the Punisher. And that's when I was like, 
okay, cool, because the Punisher show is actually slated to come out this year as well. So we don't have an exact release date for that, but it is coming out this year as of now. So really exciting stuff. But guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for the podcast today. We had a bit of a lengthy one, but guys, there was so much information and movie news from San Diego Comic-Con. I just had to talk all about it, kind of give my insights on certain things here and there, and I'm just really looking forward to the upcoming movie slash TV season. It's going to be a really good one. Before I go, I do want to go ahead and throw out there all four base uh, Marvel Netflix shows all got renewed for another season, so we're going to be getting Daredevil Season 3, Jessica Jones Season 2, Luke Cage Season 2, and yes, Iron Fist Season 2. I know it was looked at as the worst of the Marvel shows on Netflix, but hey, I got faith in it. Iron Fist was not that bad. It was slow at times. I'm not going to say it was a horrible show because we did get a look at Iron Fist, which is cool. His backstory is interesting. Really cool characters came out of that show, such as Colleen Wing, Bushido, and all these other characters came out. It was a really good show, but all the Netflix shows, such as Daredevil and all of them, they got renewed for another season. Looking forward to that. But guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for me. Before I go, I want to ask you guys, what did you pull away from San Diego Comic-Con? What was your absolute favorite thing to come out of this awesome convention we get every year? What did you guys think? What made you just go, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. You know, let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below. In my opinion, you know, DC did a really good job announcing all this stuff and getting fans hyped for it. I wanted a trailer for Infinity War. We didn't get it, you know, just maybe like a teaser, but the movie is 10 months away, so, you know, I wasn't expecting too, too much. But, you know, in my opinion, I'm going to go ahead and say DC won San Diego Comic-Con with the hype they built for all their movies coming up. It was really, really exciting. But that's going to go ahead and do it for me, guys. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to hit that like button as it does help out so, so much. If you are new to the channel, if you are liking what you are hearing slash seeing, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more videos and podcasts coming you guys' way very, very soon. But in the meantime, I am the Keyblade Master 326 or Tyler, as most of you guys know me by. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, peace out.